Growing up, there were these things called scholastic book fairs at school, where they would gather us babies into a room filled with shiny new books and let us buy anything we wanted with our parents' money. I loved scholastic book fairs because I loved books, provided that they were about Pokemon or drawing. Everything else was garbage to me. But one book series always stood out to me more than any others, and that was a series called Animorphs. Mostly because their covers look like this. Animorphs went on to be quite a popular series, spanning over 54 books, a short-lived TV series, and even some impressive-looking video games. And although I was surrounded by Animorphs growing up, I never experienced any of it. Not a book, not a TV episode, nothing. So, on a whim, I decided to finally read the first book in the series to see if I was missing out on a vital piece of culture during my childhood. Here's how that went. The first book in the series is called The Invasion, and it has the best first sentences of any piece of literature I think I've ever read. My name is Jake. That's my first name, obviously. I can't tell you my last name. It would be too dangerous. After establishing how dangerous it is to be a boy named Jake, we quickly backtrack to an earlier time in Jake's life and get introduced to the other main characters. There's Marco, Jake's best friend and arcade buddy. Tobias, a new kid who doesn't really have a family and is getting bullied at school. Rachel, Jake's cousin, who he's totally not attracted to. And Cassie, Rachel's friend, who Jake admits having a crush on. One night, while crossing through an abandoned construction site, an alien spaceship crash lands in front of the kids, and out pops a weird blue alien guy. Wow, we discovered a real alien. We're gonna be best friends, just like E.T. Before he dies, the alien warns them that the Earth is currently being invaded by these parasitic body-snatching slugs called the Yurks, and that soon, their invasion will be complete. He and the rest of his species, the Andalites, are trying to stop the Yurks from spreading across the universe. To combat the Yurks, the alien bestows upon our heroes a gift, the power to morph. He explains that with this new ability, they can turn into any creature that they touch, but also warns them that they should never stay morphed for more than two hours. This will be important in the story later. Shortly after, a small fleet of Yurk enslaved creatures known as Controllers lands, and we get introduced to the main villain of the story, named Visor 3. Visor 3 is the only Yurk who himself has captured an Andalite body, and therefore can also morph. He then proceeds to morph into a huge monster and eat the Andalite and our heroes who run away. The next day, the kids start experimenting with their new powers. Tobias becomes a cat, Jake becomes a dog, and Cassie a horse. Now at this point, they're pretty bad at morphing and it takes them a long time to change, like minutes. Uh, am I, am I a dog yet? Am I, is this a dog? Am I, a, am I, am I a dog yet? They start to realize that there are a lot of humans who have already been taken over by the Yurks, including Jake's older brother and members of the police who are out looking for the teens that were at the construction site that night. They can trust no one. They do some animal sleuthing to find out that there's a secret Yurk pool underneath their school. Oh, oh yeah, Yurk pools. Every three days, Yurks have to leave their host body and climb into this weird thing called the Yurk pool to like bathe in the light of this special particle it, it feeds them or something. Finding the Yurk Pool is important to our teens, as destroying it is the only chance they have of stopping the Yurks and freeing Jake's brother. So, the gang plans on infiltrating the Yurks' underground lair, but first, they need some more firepower. Together, they go to a zoo that Cassie has connections at, and they go on an epic animal-touching spree to gather as many new powers as they can. In the zoo to touch some mammals Gotta get the powers and turn into animals Fast on the feet so they don't get maimed Animals go to sleep when the power gets drained But don't worry, they're fine After that's over, the gang decides it's time to act They agree to meet up outside of school at sunset But Cassie never shows Turns out she got caught Now they need to save her too They break into the school at night And head down some stairs hidden in a janitor's closet Where the yerk pool is hidden Tobias already showed up as a hawk, but the rest decide to go as themselves as there are a lot of other humans down there, so they just act like they're among the other infected. 
They make it down there. However, they quickly realize that they bit off more than they could chew. The Yerk Pool turns out to be more of an underground Yerk city with buildings and cages and lots of imprisoned and controlled creatures. Wondering what to do, and with only minutes left before Cassie gets slug-brained, the gang gets spotted and decides that their only available option is to morph. And oh boy, let me tell you, they kick some alien butt. None of the controllers can stop their animal rampage, and they free most of the caged humans, including Cassie and Jake's older brother Tom. All is going well until Visor 3 shows up. He commends their meager efforts to save the humans, but says that they're no match for him, and he's totally right. He morphs into an eight-legged, eight-armed, eight-headed, fireball-breathing monstrosity. Fireballs start flying, and there are a lot of casualties. Our heroes decide that their only choice is to make an all-out run for the exit. Pretty much every escapee is recaptured, and even Jake's brother is retaken after leaping onto Visor 3 to buy everyone else some more time. Ultimately, our gang barely escapes, and they're injured pretty badly, and the only person that they actually saved was Cassie. The next day, Jake is feeling defeated and overwhelmed. A hawk stops by his window and he recognizes it as Tobias. He tells Tobias that he can morph back now. And Tobias is silent. Tobias then explains that the only way that he was able to escape the previous day was to stay up high as a hawk and wait out the night. Because of this, he had stayed morphed for longer than two hours. He was stuck as a hawk forever now. Jake cries and that's how the story ends. Yeah, that's how it ends. I was surprised too. Kind of dark for a kid's book, but I guess there's a lot more books in the series to turn things around. Now, what did I think about the book? I kind of loved it. It was fun and nostalgic. Kids turning into animals to fight slugs. What's not to like? There's even some cool internal moments in the book where we get a look at how all this affects the characters mentally. Uh, like how turning into a dog helped Jake feel happier because his dog brain was always happy and wasn't so weighed down with the pressure of having to save the world. All in all, it's a kid's book, so there's nothing too deep, but it still managed to tug on the heartstrings just enough and was a fun ride. What did you think? Let me know if you guys liked these books growing up. And speaking of liking things, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This is a new channel and everything helps. But that's all for me. This video took a long time to make, but it was really fun, so I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.